Look, Halucha is an absolute beast. This dude's got a solid offensive typing with fighting and flying, and its base 118 speed and 92 attack can allow it to do some pretty cool stuff. Its ability Unburdened doubles its already insane speed when it loses an item, and I like to pair this with the Grassy Seed. When Halucha switches into Grassy Terrain, it then pops the seed and gives it a plus one defense boost, and doubles its speed with the Unburdened. Throw in Swords Dance to boost attack, and Stab Acrobatics that is now 110 power after using the item, and Halucha has some amazing sweet potential. Alright, look, Halucha has always been insane, and people just still do not respect this thing, so today I'm here to change that. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, and I promise you will not regret it. The Lucha is one of those guys that not only got blessed with a sweet design, but also it's just super fun to use, and that just makes life feel good. What also makes life feel good is today's sponsor, shout out to Surfshark VPN. If you're somehow living in 2024 and you don't know what a VPN is, let me change the game for you. It's a virtual private network that encrypts your personal data, it can mask your IP address, and that allows you to be safe and lets you do some cool stuff. Surfshark is my favorite company to work with because their VPN is awesome and it's super easy to use. By turning on the Surfshark, you can change your virtual location to anywhere in the world that you want. My favorite perk of this is being able to access and unblock streaming platforms for other countries. All you gotta do is pick a server, connect, and then you're watching Japanese Netflix or any other countries with any streaming services. The VPN is also amazing for staying safe online, which is getting more and more important. When you connect to an unknown Wi-Fi signal, you're putting your data at risk, but if you turn on the VPN to encrypt your data, it keeps all your info safe. There's also the Surfshark antivirus add-on that helps keep your device virus-free and gives you some real-time protection for peace of mind. If that wasn't enough, one of my favorite things about Surfshark is that with one subscription, you can have unlimited devices. You can literally share your account with all your friends, they encourage it, and you can truly pay less than a piece of gum for a more secure and private online life. Plus, it's just kind of fun to use. Go ahead and secure your privacy with Surfshark and I'm positive you'll be happy with the service. Use code HEYDUN for an extra three months free at the link in the description. And let's get back into the match. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Alolan Ninetales. As to be expected, this thing's here for that Aurora Veil and just be annoying. So I decided to lead off with the Bastiodon, kind of expecting that, as I can freely get up my Stealth Rock here, and Optimus Prime's big metal ass is here to stir some stuff up. I know that I can take an attack from this thing easily. I can freely set up that Stealth Rock on turn one here, as they are gonna go for that Aurora Veil. So that's gonna make it real annoying to get some good offensive pressure here. They likely have the Light Clay, and it's uh, gonna be a free you know, Reflect and Light Screen for the next eight turns. So. I take this opportunity just to set up the Stealth Rock here. I don't really have a whole lot of options for switches, but what I do have is the red card item. I know that I can take one attack from this thing easily, as a blizzard basically heals me, and uh, that's going to activate the red card, saying, hey, actually, get the hell out of here, man. It's going to make that thing force a switch, and I'm really hoping anything but the Sinister comes in, so, of course, the Sinister comes in. It <laughs> randomly drags out the one Mon we did not want to see. That is because... I'm starting to set up the old Iron Defense. Now, Bastiodon actually has a nice little unique position here with the DLC, it got access to Body Press, I believe. And with its already insane defenses, after an Iron Defense, a Body Press hurts. However, I don't really want to stay in here and I'm kind of forced to switch. So, I at least get the Ninetales out of there. And with you know this thing being behind the screens, I imagine they probably start to set up the Combines. And this damn Teacup is already defensive as hell anyway, which... Seems like the last guy would be defensive, but I bring in the Tentacruel here, who does actually avoid the Machigacha, which is actually super nice. Now, today I'm working with a weird-ass jellyfish, and that is because this boy is a sharp jelly, and I go for the sword stance here. I'm physical attacking kind of offensive sweeper Tentacruel, and I figure, you know, I can probably take attacks from this thing pretty nicely, you know, as long as I don't get, like, burnt by a Machigacha. I can still put some pressure on the Sinister here, so... They take that opportunity to go for the Calm Mind, and at this point, at plus two, I'm just going to go for the knockoff, get rid of this thing's item. Uh, I didn't see Leftover, turns out to be the Big Root, which is going to increase uh, the healing from Machigacha. However, this actually it would be a solid position. They go for the Machigacha, where they actually, you know, they heal from that, they take some life from me. And I'm actually not working with the Liquid Ooze ability here, and I'm instead Clear Body, because I didn't want to be intimidated, but you know, it would have been solid to make him hurt himself when they go for that healing move. However, that does a lot of damage. This Tentacruel is not invested in HP or special defense like a lot of the time I normally run. So I'm able to, uh, unfortunately, get two hit KO'd by a Machigacha after a plus two. And that is pretty scary. I did at least get a poison jab off. You can see uh, I hit like a damn wet noodle behind the, <laughs> the Aurora Veil. I was trying to just fish for a poison 
and it doesn't happen. So now I got to find a way out of getting screwed over by this teacup. So I decided to go into the Porygon 2. Now I traced this thing's heat proof for absolutely no reason. You could stick this duck in the oven if you wanted to, but it's not recommended. I'm going to end up going for the Thunder Wave. Now I'm specially defensive and even at plus one, I know that I can take attacks from this thing, you know, pretty much all day. And Porygon 2 has a good opportunity to kind of come in here, paralyze it, you know, use a couple Aurora Veil turns and just be doing some annoying Porygon 2 stuff. This thing's role on the team is to get these paralyzes and try to enable my sweepers in the back. So while I get that para, which is super nice, I am now aerodynamic speedy duck. I go for an ice beam just to get a little bit of chip here, but they just do break through that para. Um, and that is going to, it's going to start to hurt a little bit. I can potentially recover, but I'm starting to figure out there is an opening to this if the, I can play my cards right. So. The Aurora Veil is going to wear off, and I'm figuring, you know, I can continue to Ice Beam, but it's not going to get me really anywhere. So I'm going to end up switching Porygon out, whose name is Polygorn, because of when Pokemon Go first came out. At one point, there was a Porygon down the street, and my friend who doesn't play Pokemon was like, holy shit, it's a Polygorn. And so that's that's the nickname lower there. But I decided to switch into the Rillaboom. Now, the main reason for that is that I want to come in and just plant some grass seed all over the damn place. We lay down... Uh, the grassy terrain, which is going to help me in the long run. So, uh, of course, I come in on a Machigacha, and that shit hurts. That tea is scalding hot. Luckily, I don't get burnt from it. Um, but my main goal with the Rillaboom is just to get up that terrain. Now, I'm holding the terrain extender to ensure that it stays up for a long time. But I'm just going to immediately U-turn and try to get something going here. So, of course, with this thing paralyzed, you know, there's always the chance that I can switch in on a para turn. And the only way that I can break through... You know, a lot of their team is going to be with the Halucha. So, I switch into the Halucha here uh, on the U-turn. I come in, activate the grassy seed item that I'm holding. And that is not only going to give me a defense boost, but of course, it activates that unburden. And now, I am absolutely zooming. We did actually come in on a full para turn, which is great. But there's still some work to be done here, because I do need to boost my offenses a bit here. So, I do want to go for this Swords Dance. And I am technically risking the fact that they could get a burn with the Macha Gacha. But listen... I ain't afraid of no Play-Doh ass tea. So I go for that Swords Dance. It turns out they're actually going to go for the Strength Sap, which, you know, is to be expected um, on the Sinistra here. It's going to drop my attack one stage and also give them a heal. But I'm in a position here where I'm already at plus one attack. So I'm just going to go for a second Swords Dance. That's going to bring me to plus three. And the, the Sinistra doesn't have much to do to me. So they decide to switch out and they're actually going to end up going into the Hoopa. This thing looks absolutely insane. I am just a mere little birdie going for some swords dances here. Um, we have like some sort of crazy ass monster from hell with a hole in his chest. I decide I'm gonna fill that hole. Pause. With an acrobatics I can actually outspeed easily you know with the unburden and after those swords dances nothing wants to deal with an acrobatics and Halucha is in a solid position here. So now they get a switch into whatever they like and they decide to go into Crawdont which I am gonna expect. Now the reason is because Crawdont has some crazy offensive power with the priority because this thing has adaptability which boosts its stab. Uh, it's also going to end up going for the Terra Water here which is going to make its Aqua Jet hit real hard. And when you're sitting here with a fast sweeper like Halucha that relies on speed a lot of the time, you know, one of the checks is going to be in the form of priority. However, they're going to go for this Aqua Jet and they got all the damage in the world here but that's actually not even going to knock me down below half and that's because the grassy seed boosted my defense and I can just finish him off with that acrobatic. So we love to see the Terra gone because now defensively I don't have to worry about some crazy change-ups um, and we get through one form of priority. Now there is actually another form of priority which is going to be King Gambit. Now this thing oftentimes is going to carry the Sucker Punch. Luckily though being fighting type we do resist that and with the plus one defense I'm confident that I can take this. So they go for that Sucker Punch. It is not going to hurt me very much. And luckily, I do have the coverage with the close combat. Beat the absolute living hell out of Buddy while he's sitting on his weird toilet over there. And that is going to take care of one of the biggest threats here. So Halucha going on an absolute tear. And at this point, we are faster than everything. But, you know, they do have a Blaziken. Blaziken does have the speed boost ability. Um, but since I do have my speed double, this thing's going to need like three protects in a row to get enough speed. And that is definitely not happening. So I go for the acrobatics here, but they have different plans and they're just going to go ahead and run. But as it turns out, Halucha makes the rules around here and we were not finished. So I can go for that acrobatics, which is of course going to easily finish off the Blaziken. And now they're like, okay, well, damn, at least I can go into the Alola Ninetales, try to get an Aurora Veil up. Nope, boom, too slow. Acrobatics just whoops that ass. Down goes the Ninetales. And the final Pokemon is going to be the Sinistra, who of course gets absolutely bodied by an acrobatics. And that 
is going to be the true end of the match, and uh, thank god we have technology. And while that is a satisfying ending, this is going to bring us into match number two. Listen, if you enjoy these two for one videos, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel, and it was greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and let's jump into the next match. So this time, my opponent does have a very scary team with some potential to set up. Also, they have the Palafin, so I'm reluctant to lead off with the Bastiodon, and I'm just going to go right for the old Smooth Duck. Uh, I want to bring this thing in. I can trace its technician for absolutely no reason. But, at this point, I can freely go for a Thunder Wave. When I see a Scizor lead like this, it likely means they're going to go for something like a Swords Dance. Uh, because, you know, the Porygon can't really touch this thing. So, it is going to dance with the Swords. And I'm like, oh, hold on, slow slow it down there, buddy. I go for that Thunder Wave. Half the old speed. And that's going to make this thing a whole lot more manageable to deal with. Of course, I can't really touch this thing. And I'm figuring, you know, at least with the plus two, this thing is still a pretty big threat. So... One of my best insurance policies on not getting swept by a dude like this does come in the form of, you know, sturdy red card Bastiodon because when they touch me, they're going to have to get the hell out of here. But it turns out, as I switch into Bastion, they're going to end up going for the Baton Pass to pass that Swords Dance over to something else. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, so this is what we're doing, huh? All right. So they decide to pass the stat boost into the Coma O, and that is a little bit scary, but again, I know that I have this red card, and I also know that this, this asshole is going to go for the Clangorous Soul, which is going to boost this thing even further, which does, at the cost of taking a little bit of damage, it gives you a plus one in every stat. So, yeah, this is about the scariest possible situation, except Bastiodon's like, no, nah, I'm just actually... I'm just chilling over here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set these down around you. I'm just gonna just gonna place these here. Lay down the stealth rock, and that's gonna be nice for me. So, of course, as soon as this thing touches me, red card's gonna activate, and I can just freely go for a body press here. As they go for the drain punch, does knock me down to sturdy, which is uh, is super nice because that does allow the red card uh, the red card to activate. So while they do get all of the HP back, I'm like, actually, you just played right into my fucking mirror force. I play play the old red card, and that is going to force them out into a random Pokemon. So, while I don't get swept by that thing right now, the threat of that is still here for later as it's sitting at full HP. So, this is actually gonna end up dragging in the Typhlosion. And so this fella had to come in on Stealth Rock and also get sat on by the big ass Bastiodon. So, I'm able to do a nice amount of damage to this thing and I can't really switch here. Nothing really wants to switch into a Typhlosion. So, you know, I figure Bastiodon kind of did exactly what I needed it to do. So, I take an Eruption and that's gonna knock me out. So. I actually, you know, I don't see an item on the Typhlosion, which probably means this thing is Choice Scarf. And if it's locked itself into Eruption, you know who is great in this situation is going to be the Tentacruel. So, you know, I obviously still have the good special bulk. I can take an Eruption, especially from this health, all day. And that allows me to freely set up a Swords Dance here. But it turns out I actually go first, which means that this thing is most definitely not going to be running with the Choice Scarf. It can switch its moves and it goes over to the Shadow Ball, which does hit me neutrally and unfortunately gets a critical hit. So does more than it was supposed to, also pops my air balloon, uh, but at this point I'm like screw it, I'm already sharp, I'm just gonna go for a liquidation here, nothing really wants to deal with that, and Tentacruel at base 100 speed, like this little, he's got so many damn legs that I guess he's just super fast, so Jellyfish going crazy, liquidation takes care of it, and now they get a switch back into the Scizor, so we've kind of seen that this Scizor is here as like a support fella who sets up swords dances and then passes him off to his buddies, so I'm like you know what, I might as well actually even just go for another Swords Dance of my own. I don't know what this thing really wants to do to me. I know that it can't really knock me out. And its best bet is going to be trying to pass something. So, I go for dance number two. Buddy joins in on the dance party and does set up another SD. So, again, this thing is still scary in this position because we know that it can pass. Um, and it actually ends up going for the bullet punch here. Breaks through the para and that just straight up knocks me out. That is the cost of not having any form of defense on this tentacle, I die to a plus two bullet punch, which is wildly unfortunate, but while we don't get the tentacle set up, I am finding the opening for our boy Halucha here, um, because I feel like I, I can kind of read what, what the situation's gonna happen here. So, I decide to bring in the Rillaboom. Of course, we're here just to lay down the old grass, and I'm actually just gonna immediately pivot. So there's a couple of different reasons. I go for the U-turn because when I don't see the bullet punch, that means he's likely gonna click something like a bug move, or go for the baton pass, where, in either situation, bringing in Halucha here, especially with that Grassy Seed to get the defense boost, I'm feeling like I can be in a pretty good spot. So, I'm gonna bring in Young Nacho, and we are absolutely ready to party. So, this thing comes in, of course, is gonna activate that Grassy Seed. Thank you to Rillaboom. We are absolutely the best little duo here. And they do, in fact, go for that Baton Pass. Sadly, they don't get the, uh, the full pair there, which is frustrating, but... 
the baton pass is going to have to go into something that's not going to be faster uh, than Halucha here. So they're going to go right back into the combo. Oh, this thing wants to set up on me. It already has the plus two. Uh, but luckily, we know that we are faster. Now, while I don't have a Swords Dance set up, I do still feel confident that Acrobatics, considering I don't have my item, should actually knock this thing out from here. And of course, we are faster, and that is going to end up knocking out the Koma O. But it turns out it wasn't even Koma O after all. It was the, it was the damn uh, Hisuian Zorark. So, uh, you know, we, we Scooby Doo the mask off of that thing, and we do see that at least I don't have to worry about that thing running around anymore. So, that is amazing. And Halucha is again sitting in a fantastic spot here because back comes the Scizor. This thing no longer has that Swords Dance boost. And I'm like, you know what? There, there's so many swords in this match, I might as well just keep the theme going. I go for another swords dance here. That's gonna get me to plus two. And uh, they're actually gonna end up going for the pounce. So that's like a 50 power stab bug move with technician. It's obviously not gonna hurt me, but 100% uh, of the time it actually does give you a speed drop. So while my speed was doubled from the unburdened, now we're sitting at minus one, which actually is fine with me because we're still faster uh, than literally everything. So after plus two and acrobatics definitely takes care of the scissor there and they are running out of options and we are in full form with the halucha out here so there is one thing on their team that i cannot actually grab a knockout on because they resist both of my stabs and that is the toxtricity so while toxtricity comes in i do have a little trick under my sleeves here i'm gonna go for the acro acrobatics as it's my best damage i can't really afford to close combat and lose uh defensive stats at this point but i can actually commit the ground turret knowing that they're pretty much forced to have to go for an electric attack here. I put the earth on my damn head. It is absolutely neck day out here, and we are gonna be in a great position if they do commit that electric move, which they're kind of boxed into having to go for that. Turns out they actually go for a Terra of their own, and they're gonna go for that electric Terra, just to try to guarantee you know, that they can get enough damage to knock out the Halucha, because again, it's sitting here as my win condition. I am, of course, still faster. Acrobatics actually, after a Swords Dance, almost takes care of it, and they do go for the overdrive. So no longer affects us because we got a sweet bull cut and we're even actually healing now because I'm no longer flying type right, because of that grassy terrain. And at this point, I decide to go for the encore. Gonna lock him into that electric move knowing that, you know, of course it's not gonna affect me. I do this for two reasons. First of all, just to be an asshole. And second of all, because now it puts me in a spot where if I need to, I can swords dance up some more, but also we just, we're pretty much just flexing here. I <laughs> go for that encore. Um, and yeah, they're locked in. I figure though, I don't even really need another swords dance. I'm actually just going to go for the acrobatics here. I just encore him just to, just to make him feel good about himself. But that's going to take care of all light bulb head over here. And uh, yeah, again, Halucha can really catch people off guard. There's, there's honestly a, not a lot of checks to this thing. It's best checks come in the form of, you know, good priority. But again, with that defense boost, we can, we can take hits. But uh, this is going to drag them into the Kama O once again. I can then go for that acrobatics, uh, and that is definitely going to take care of my boy. So down goes the actual Kama O, and at this point, their final Pokemon is uh, going to have to face the wrath of the greatest Halucha to ever live, and you're going to have a bad time. Listen, you doubt the Halucha and do not respect this thing's power, you're going you're gonna to have a bad time. So the final Mon is actually going to be the Palafin, which is kind of funny because this thing didn't get the opportunity uh, to actually switch into its full form, but you know, Acrobatics does take care of it, and Halucha reigns supreme once again. So, that is going to be the end of the match. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. The Lucha is always is always a fun, uh, unburdened mon to mess around with. It, it can do, it has a lot of options, but again, I appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys next time.